His last minutes were honestly some of our longest minutes. I remember after we did all of the the crafts for him, we got his little heartbeat and his foot. Yeah, that was um, the same day. Yeah, I remember the nurse, she kind of looked at us and was like, okay, yeah, it's, a, it's that time. Like, if you want to hold him, it's not looking good. Yeah, because his numbers, his were, numbers dropping, were dropping, right? His numbers were dropping, and um, we were kind of holding it off, holding him too, because we just felt that him being in the bed untouched and not moving that that would be the best thing for him right. so we were like nope if you know if he's still doing good we're just gonna let him rest yeah. and relax and right. Right. again that was a hard decision too to not yeah. want to hold him when she told us it was time we knew that it was like really that time I sat in the chair and you were right beside me and they handed him to me and we're just holding him while you know his numbers are dropping and and they told us that he was comfortable, so that in a way brought us comfort, but yeah. it was still difficult because was tough, yeah. he was struggling to breathe. And so. Yeah. And there's nothing that we could have done, nothing, you know? Yeah. Um, besides pray, and that's what we resorted to. And yeah. um, our, our parents were there, even mm -hmm. praying with us, well, yeah. my mom and dad. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we. Yeah. Yeah, so. I was just sitting there and Tony was right beside me and we're just holding him and we're crying and just understanding like this is it. This is his last moments and just not realizing that like this is what it would look like Yeah. and saying goodbye to our son and I remember we were just sitting there and like Tony said, it, it the minutes felt so long and I had hope, I had hope throughout, but I mean, there's moments where you know that it, that it's time, but yeah. I would look at the nurse and be like, oh, is, is, is he, is, you know, could he come back up from this? Like, I didn't want to give up. There was no point in time right. where I just wanted to say, Right. Okay, this is it. I was like, no, like, can can he come up from this? It, like, I just wanted to hang on. I never wanted to like, yeah, come to terms with the fact that he was right. about to be gone. Yeah, and I just remember we were crying and just so overwhelmed with the emotion and the moment that we were in. And we were just sitting there. And we were just thanking God. We were literally yeah. thanking God. Yeah, we. We, we just shifted our, our focus to, to yeah. being gra grateful, really. Yeah. And, um, For all the time we had with him and just how yeah. precious he was. And just the yeah. fact that he will even be able to go to heaven. Right. That there's a place called heaven right. that we get to go one day. That That's where our hope lies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why we were sitting there and we were thanking God and with tears running down our face, we were just, we still had gratitude and right. our hearts that. weren't mad at God. No, they yeah. they weren't. And I, like you said earlier, I know those nurses again were probably looking at us like we were crazy, like, even in that moment, yeah. you know, because we were so grateful and yeah. and just so appreciative of just all the support and help and just everybody that loved him and came to see him and yeah. and made him cards and took pictures of yeah, him, gave us phone um, calls and prayed with us. Yeah, and, that that stuff really mm -hmm. meant a lot and really showed face in that moment yeah. um and like you said we were just so grateful and i remember specifically you know towards the end of that um you know the doctor came in and confirmed you know did the pulse test and confirmed okay he had he had passed yeah um and i think part of the the start to the the grieving process and the, the releasing um process mm -hmm. um was my dad instructing yeah. you that and it was such sound and, and wise advice at that time. Um, even during that moment, we were just so foggy, but... Yeah, um, it was a beautiful moment. My, my dad had instructed Lauren, he said, okay, now hand Zion to Tony. Um, because at that time you were holding him, right? So, so yeah. Um, I think that moment really started the, uh, the, the, the grieving process for us, you know? Because it was in a sense you handing him off to me. And so I, 
as I took him and, and held him for a second and you know uh, just told him again that you know we loved him and, and gave him a kiss and you know put him back into the to the bed and I said God he's yours so I think that was super tough and again just trying to maintain that that mindset of gratitude and appreciation during that moment was probably one of the hardest moments in my life so but it was yeah yeah so I remember in that moment too I was like it, even looking back it's wild to me but I remember looking at the nurse and just like checking on her because and that was God's heart in, the, in that moment because she goes through stuff like that all the time yeah. and yeah. she was a part of this loss like we were in a different right. way yeah. but yeah. like we were in um, it's, it's so you have to be a tough tough person to be in those environments like that day to day so yeah. I think one thing I noticed too is I, um, after we left the hospital you know we, we tried to go eat um, eventually I don't yeah, even remember we, when that none was of us but had eaten that day the kids nothing yeah we had at least tried to go eat to get something in our system because we started getting headaches and just emotionally draining day but it really pondered on me as we're sitting in the restaurant you know we had just gone through that situation that same day you know mm -hmm. And so how many people do we encounter throughout the day that yeah. you just never know what they're going through and right. we're sitting in a restaurant, you know, after we had yeah. just encountered that. No one that, knew so. what we had just gone no, through. No, server didn't know. You know, obviously people aren't yeah. going to know that. So yeah. that really illuminated to me and, and Jesus teaching me things that, hey, just, you know, be mindful of what people are going through and, you know, obviously yeah. treat everybody with yeah. um, like you would want to be treated. And um, I know that's like a small lesson in this whole thing, but that was just such a powerful message for me because... Yeah. We had just experienced that pretty um, traumatic event. You know, I'm, I'm sure many people are asking, you know, why why would we go these these links to to do this type of video, or, mm -hmm. or why would we sit down for this long and even and talk about it? But mm -hmm. I, I think for us, we um, we know that this is a, a a huge test for our life. Yeah. A huge challenge to even our faith, and so um, you know, a few things that we would want someone to take from this. Uh, life lesson and, and uh, experiences, uh, community is huge and just being a part of a small group, right? Yeah. Um, doing life with other people and uh, knowing that you're not doing life alone. I think that's a, a really big uh, foot stomp point for us. And um, trusting in God. One of the scriptures that bring us encouragement um, during this time, um, and it's just, it's a scripture about the kind of mindset that we're supposed to have as believers and people who trust in Jesus and, and don't focus on our circumstances. It's in 2 Corinthians 4, 17. It says, For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now, rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Mm -hmm. And so with that, we just want to encourage anyone who's going through a difficult situation. We just want, first of all, for you to trust in Jesus with everything that you have. Yeah. Trust in His Word because God is not like man and he doesn't lie and his word is true and when you fully trust in him no matter what comes your way you can get through it um, community is super important because you will have hard days and community can reinforce what god has said and reinforce yeah. the love of god and reinforce the things that sometimes we forget because life can be hard yeah. but um just um, going to church regularly with having your community there and having a small group and just having at least someone that you can lean on and trust um, during a difficult time like this that's just what really got us through um, because even when we were going through this we still went to church we still went to our small group 
we knew that we needed those things to stay strong right. even it even though it, it may not have been what we wanted to do mm. we may have wanted to stay yeah. at the hospital or stay you know with zion right. but we knew we needed to get strong spiritually right. otherwise we would crumble and so that's just our encouragement that god is good no matter what you go through and he loves you and if you keep your eyes on him you will get through it Amen. you will Amen. That, that's yeah